cursed thumbnail. Just stopping by to say your thumbnail is cursed. I didn't know I could hate a thumbnail so um, much. That thumbnail, thumbnail was F. What have you got upon that thumbnail? Okay, since you all loved my Thomas Rat thumbnail so much, I contacted Krakowski's greatest artist and had it converted into merchandise. You can now actually buy it, along with other lit Filmento merch. Great holiday presents. Grab yours while you still can and use code Filmento to get 16% off. What are you waiting for? Do so what's your plan then? I row over, search the ship until I find your bloody key. I like it. Simple, easy to remember. Over the last year and a half, I've given a lot of credit to Avengers Infinity War for being one of the strongest entries in the MCU. Because it takes this impossibly massive story full of different characters and storylines and locations and makes it work incredibly well. And I'm never gonna take that credit away from it. But what I will say I find interesting is that what this movie did in 2018, another movie had already done all the way back in 2006. And in some ways arguably even better. That another movie being Pirates of the Caribbean Dead Man's Chest. When you take Dead Man's Chest and place it next to Infinity War, it's actually pretty crazy just how similar it is. It has multiple groups of characters with their own storylines that take us to wildly different environments. It has a great non-human technological marvel of a villain. I mean, it even ends in our heroes being defeated and then verbally sets up a sequel which is all about reversing that defeat to get one last chance at victory. Why would you do that? We're in the end game now. Brave the weird and haunted shores at world's end. But all individual similarities aside, I would say there is one core aspect of Dead Man's Chest that connects it to Infinity War more than anything else. An aspect that is the greatest strength of both movies. An aspect that makes both movies work. The plot. In essence, what plot means is everything that happens in a film. The events, the situations, the overall story, in a sense. And even though building great characters probably is the most important part of every film, that's not to say plot is any less important. There's a very dangerous misconception out there that these two are somehow mutually exclusive. That plot is separate from character. That a movie can be just about one or the other. I feel like uh, studio movies are more about plot. And I don't, yeah. I don't like movies like that. Me neither. Yeah, I like movies about people. An indie movie about plot or a studio movie about plot, I don't give a rat's winkle doodle. When the reality is that plot and character are directly tied to one another in a supportive manner. Great plot builds great characters. And we'll get to that. But basically, if you don't know what plot is made up of, just remember three letters. G. S. U. The goal, the stakes, the urgency. These three components are plot. They are what Dead Man's Chest along with Infinity War did better than most other movies in existence. They are the main reason for why these two massive convoluted films work so great. And so, since we've covered Infinity War before, let's take a look at Dead Man's Chest to see what these three plot components are exactly and what they do when utilized properly. Let's see how to build the perfect plot. A movie's primary goal is one of the most crucial components of every narrative because it's there to answer the fundamental question of what. What is it our characters want? What is the objective they are trying to achieve? What exactly is it that this movie is? For Dead Man's Chest, the primary goal is already there in the title, to find the chest that contains the heart of Davy Jones. And pretty much all of our main characters, our heroes, our anti-heroes, our villains, are after that one same goal. They have their own different routes and reasons and schedules to get to it, but they are all eventually after it. And whoever possesses that chest possesses the leverage to command Jones to do whatever it is he or she wants. I'll find a way to sever Jones's hold on you and not rest until this blade pierces his heart. Full pardon. Commission is a privateer on behalf of England and the East India Trading Company. I care not for cursed Aztec gold. My desires are not so provincial. There's more than one chest of value in these waters. The chest is no longer safe. Charter Costa y la Cruces. Captain Jack wants the chest to save his own life because Davy Jones is coming for him. Will Turner at first is only out to save Elizabeth but then converts to the primary goal of finding the chest when he realizes that's the way to save his father from the Flying Dutchman. Norrington wants the chest to get his life back from the government. Beckett wants the chest to gain full control of the seas and end piracy. Davy Jones wants the chest because uh, his heart is in it. First of all, in terms of character building, these ones are very important because they
they give out a general sense of who these people are, what is the purpose for which they exist. And the stronger this goal-driven purpose is, the stronger and more memorable the character is. The reason Elizabeth ultimately becomes very forgettable is because she has no desire in the primary goal of getting the chest. And that's why at the end she's a passive passenger who's just kind of there, which is not interesting. <laughs> But character work aside, this goal component of the plot is also very important for the movie as a whole, because it makes it clear to the audience what it is they're watching. See, much like Infinity War, Dead Man's chest is very big, and by nature of big, very complex, which always creates a danger of it becoming confusing and thus boring. But just like with the Infinity Stones in Infinity War, that's never an issue here, because from the start, we know exactly what this movie is. One massive race to the chest of Davy Jones. Everything we see, every scene and sequence we go through, it's all a series of checkpoints to get us closer to our ultimate destination. Even when we're not exactly sure where we are, we still know what we're there for and that it serves a purpose. What's the reason we're trying to escape a cannibal island? Oh yeah, to head out to find the chest. What's the reason we're in this creepy voodoo shack? Oh yeah, to locate the key for the chest. What's the reason we're suddenly playing dice? Oh yeah, the key. What's the reason for the key? Oh yeah, the chest. Whatever the question, the answer is always the chest. And having that that answer placed in the back of our minds at the very start is like having an overarching map of the story's direction that shows us that we're constantly making progress. And it's that sense of direction and progress why we never feel lost. It's why even the 10 year old Filmento who hadn't seen the first movie was able to follow this one. It is why, just as is the case with Infinity War, here it's fair to say that if you are confused watching this film, the problem isn't with the film, it's with you. The second plot component you need to function together with the primary goal are the stakes, which exist to answer the question of why. Why are the characters after the chest? Why should we care and support their quest to find the chest? What is the terrible, terrifying outcome if they fail? As you know, Infinity War uses more overarching stakes that apply to all the characters as a whole. If Thanos gets the stones before we do, half of life will be eradicated. And there is a similar overarching set of stakes in Dead Man's chest as well. If we don't get to the chest, and the heart of Davy Jones before Beckett or his proxies do, then Beckett will use it to eradicate piracy. If the company controls the chest, they control the sea. A truly discomforting notion, love. And bad. Bad for every mother's son what calls himself pirate. But in addition to just more general overarching set of stakes, here there are also more personal conflicting stakes for the characters individually. Jones is terrible, Leviathan will find you. He will drag the pearl back to the depths and you along with it. Take this with a promise. I will not abandon you. The pursuit cost me my crew, my commission, and my life. And we've each left our mark on the other. What mark did he leave on you? Who sent that thieving charlatan onto my ship? Who told them of the key? Jack Sparrow. If Jack doesn't get the chest, the Kraken will munch him up. If Will doesn't get the chest, his once lost father will be lost forever. If Norrington doesn't get the chest, his life of pointless misery is all his life will ever be. If Beckett doesn't get the chest, he loses the only chance at fulfilling his mission of total control. If Davy Jones doesn't get the chest, well, again, his heart is in it and a bunch of people wanna stab it. For the character building aspect, the purpose of stakes is to strengthen what the goal created. Basically, the stakes take a character's want and turn it it into a need. Jack, for example, not only wants to get the chest, he needs to get the chest, or both he and his beloved ship will perish. And not only does this need factor make us root for Jack more, it also makes him, along with everyone else, more three-dimensional. Because even though knowing what a character is fighting to get will show you who they are on the surface, you never really truly know someone until you know why they are fighting to get it. What is it they are most afraid to lose? Thanos isn't after the stones just because he wants to, but because he firmly believes that if he doesn't use them, all of life will perish. As to the movie itself, stakes have a pretty similar effect. Whereas the goal informs us of what this movie is, the stakes are there to inform us of why we should care and take interest in any of it. In other words, they're there to infuse the movie with emotion and power. A plot with nothing on the line is just meaningless noise, but a plot with everything on the line is nothing but meaning. Take the ending three-way sword fight for example. Can't let you do that, will you? 
as if Jones is dead. Who's to call his terrible beastie off the hunt, eh? I keep the promises I make, Jack. I intend to free my father. I can't let you do that either. Lord Beckett desires the contents of that chest. I deliver it. I get my life back. On the surface, this whole thing is just three Disney characters whacking at each other in cliche PG-13 fashion. But deep down, it's actually about three fully justifiable motives in direct conflict with one another, portrayed by three men fighting for the one thing they simply cannot lose. Which by nature means that there is no compromise or an easy solution for this fight. Only one man can win, while the other two are forced to face that which they're not able to face. And that inherent conflict in motivations is what makes the sequence powerful. That is what makes any plot powerful. The final piece of the plot puzzle is the urgency of the narrative, the purpose of which is to answer the question of when. When does the primary goal have to be achieved? When is the deadline of failure and defeat? In other words, the point of urgency is to establish a ticking clock that makes the audience feel like they're on a true, intense ride, something which all great plots should aspire to be. And in some ways, we've already touched on this. Much like Infinity War being a race to the stones before Thanos can get them in Dead Man's chest, the urgency comes from getting the chest before for Beckett or Davy Jones or some of the other characters do. Because again, this whole movie is one big race to the chest. I wouldn't say it's as strong as in Infinity War where the race physically begins right away, but it is a race nonetheless. Plus, there are also some character-specific deadlines as well. Will initially has to find Jack before Elizabeth is executed. And Jack, for example, is always under the pressure of some kind of a ticking clock. The time is up. It comes now. The feast is about to begin. Jack's life will end when the drums stop. Oh. Three days. For character building, urgency is probably the most effective narrative weapon at your disposal, because there is no better and quicker way to show the audience who a character truly is and how far they're willing to go than by forcing them to make a tough choice under the pressure of time. For example, how can you show the audience that bootstrap Bill Turner is a good redeemable person who truly cares about his son, Will? Well, you have Will suddenly challenge Davy Jones to a dice game and put his life on the line and then... What's this? I'm in, matching his wager. No, don't do this. The dice cast. And if you want to go even further, you can also have Will lose the game, and then when the game looks to be over. Twelve fives. Twelve fives. Call me a liar. We're up the bed. Bootstrap Bill, you're a liar and you will spend an eternity on this ship. Basically, what urgency does in character choices is that it takes the emotion those choices contain and amplifies them to whole new levels. Because not only does a character have to make a decision, they have to make it now, which makes that decision less based on thinking and more on feeling. Ethan Hunt choosing to expose himself to save an innocent cop is good, but Ethan Hunt choosing to expose himself to save an innocent cop before she's shot by the very people he will be exposing himself to, that's breathtaking. As to the overall movie aspect of urgency, it's not as much about emotion as it is intensity. Because the way the human brain works, intense challenging situations will always feel that much more intense and challenging when they're operating under an established ticking clock. And in addition to just the overarching clock of the race to the chest, this movie also does a very good job of creating various smaller clocks for most individual scenes and sequences. Jack has to escape the cannibals before they're ready to feast on him. The good pirates have to get to the Black Pearl before the bad pirates take it. Governor Swan has to get Elizabeth to safety before someone catches on to them. The heroes have to find the chest before Davy Jones's fishmen reach them. The Black Pearl crew has to prepare for the Kraken's attack before the attack begins, and so and so on. The point of all this is to make it clear to the audience that what they're seeing cannot just go on forever, that there is a strict deadline looming in the horizon, which will either have to be met or failed. And because the audience has this knowledge in the back of their minds, they're not able to relax or rest or zone out before whatever's happening has happened, which is exactly the effect that rides are meant to have. 
And so you take this urgency component and couple it with the goal and stakes components. That's how you build a great plot that competently answers the most fundamental plot specific questions of what and why and when. And if it so happens that the plot of your movie doesn't offer great answers to each of these three questions, you better get back to writing because your plot is not ready. Thank you.